Mike Gaduru, I will show you dance. I am 14 years old. I am a first year student. In high school, I am standing in the biology lab. We are just about to do a practical exam. Mr. Efantas, our biology teacher, looks at us from the rims of his spectacles and says, I have taught biology in this school for the past 12 years and nobody has ever scored more than 20 percent in this exam <laughs> madam contest chair toastmasters and guests have you ever had words that have jarred your soul so much in the direction of rejecting them that afternoon Mr. Ifantas had placed leaves all around the bio lab and we were supposed to document their scientific names, the genus and the species. There were all kinds of leaves, thin leaves, round leaves, colored leaves, fat leaves, all kinds of leaves. There was even that very soft, smooth, velvety leaf. You know that leaf that our ancestors way back when used to use to wipe way back where? <laughs> that leaf was there. Mr. Ifantas then proceeded to tell us that students imagine that biology is a second class science when juxtaposed against physics and chemistry. And that he uses this exam to slap them back into reality when they fail. And then he told us, go ye forth and fail. I looked at Mr. Fantas, and my 14-year-old self said, no, no, you are not talking about me. No, I don't believe what you're saying. And I felt a voice rise from the bottom of my heart to my head, and I looked at Mr. Fantas. And very silently I said, I will show you dust. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, not only did I trounce the 20% ceiling he placed on us, I got 100% in that exam. Mr. Efantas could not believe it. He couldn't. That was a turning point in my life, that at 14 years old, I could listen to a derogatory voice that has authority in my life, calling me to a place of non-performance and rejecting it, my life has never been the same again. Don't we need to be very careful about the things that we say to people over whom we have authority in their lives? Fast forward. <laughs> It is 1993. I am a first year student all over again, this time in the university. I am 19 years old. I can see you trying to calculate my age. <laughs> I am standing in the science complex, and two gentlemen are at the front of the room disputing the results of our environmental planning exam. According to them, there is no way a girl can have defeated them. These two men hailed from Western Kenya, the Lakeside. And Lakesiders are known for their academic prowess. So much so that they walk around calling themselves engineer, so and so. Architect, so and so. And so when Obonyo and Magero announced to the class that the only reason why I had passed so well was because I had had sexual relations with the lecturer. I felt a Mr. Ifantas moment coming over me. The same voice rose from the bottom of my heart to my head 
And I looked at those two men and told them, I will show you dust. I emerged the valedictorian in my class, the top student in my faculty, the only one with a first class honors. I left those men in a cloud of dust. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what is your cloud of dust moment? What are those negative voices that you need to silence and silence today? The people that tell you you're not good enough. Those that tell you that you cannot make it. Those that say who you want to do, what? We will silence those voices today. You will look at those people and you will tell those people, I will show you dust. But the voice that we must silence right this minute is the voice in our heads. That voice that tells us, you cannot give a speech, you will shake in front of people. You know that voice? We will silence it. The voice that makes you doubt yourself, the voice that gives you fear when you should be walking in boldness and in courage, that voice in your head, it is going today. So the next time you hear this doubting voice in your head, grab it, look at it, eyeball to eyeball, and tell that voice, I will show you dust. I will show you dust, Madam Contestant.